Let us talk now about inertial navigation. We start by defining inertia and uh, an inertial reference frame. Inertia uh, follows Newton's first law of motion that states that an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by unbalanced force. This is very important because we can apply this concept to a coordinate system. Therefore, we can define an inertial reference frame. Uh, and what is an inertial reference frame? Is a coordinate frame in which Newton's laws of motion are valid. Uh, such a frame uh, will be neither rotating nor accelerating. Uh, in our case, the local coordinate system will be the inertial frame from which uh, the observations, the movement of the body fixed coordinate system will be measured. Inertial sensors, they are devices capable of measuring rotation rate and acceleration, both of which are vector valued variables. So the two instruments that uh, we use, uh, one is the gyroscope, uh, which are rota rotation measuring sensors, and accelerometers. Uh, accelerometers will measure acceleration. And um, it is important that uh, we have, in the case of a 3D positioning, we have gyroscopes and accelerometers align to each one of the axes. So that's what we call a multi-axis sensor uh, because then we're going to be measuring uh, the full 3D vector. And then we have the concept of an IMU, inertial measurement unit, uh, which is sometimes referred to as inertial reference unit. And uh, actually you may see some other uh, names, uh, the uh, uh, synony list of synonyms may be, may be extensive. And what are they? When we put the sensors together, accelerometers, gyroscopes, usually three of them, and the sensors will be mounted to a common base to maintain the same relative orientation. So sensors rigidly mounted, uh, we are specifically talking about uh, the modern uh, IMUs, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, these, uh, the concept of the strap down uh, very soon. Acceleration measurement can be relatively simple to understand. If you consider these, uh, a, a mass of um, uh, unit weight and um, at rest uh, held by a spring and uh, and of course if the spring uh, moves so a force is applied to it uh, to the mass and the mass will going to move uh, according to that uh, graduation uh, if uh, we can apply newton's law uh, and uh, by considering uh, the mass equals to one <coughs> the force that is applied is going to be equal to the acceleration uh, as a matter of fact uh, what happens is that the um, uh, what is measured is not the motion of the mass, but actually the force that uh, is applied to keep the mass in balance. One thing that we have to take into account is that there are other forces, other accelerations uh, applying to the um, uh, to the mass and uh, one of them uh, is gravity so if if the vehicle is standing still um, there's going to be a acceleration uh, equal to the gravity uh, pointing uh, to uh, around the z local zenith <coughs> so when they move uh, when the vehicle moves uh, what the accelerometer is registering is the actual acceleration plus the value of gravity. Uh, there are other uh, uh, accelerations 
uh, that are also sensed by the gravimeter uh, and there are tidal accelerations, uh, the ones due to polar motion and the Coriolis acceleration. So because only the acceleration, the actual acceleration caused by the movement of the vehicle is of interest, all the rest must be removed uh, from the total acceleration vector. Now, if you want to uh, uh, use the gyroscopes for orientation, uh, it is as simple as that. We have the, uh, the gyroscopes maintaining the local uh, coordinate system, uh, which plays a role as the inertial system in this case. And then the, uh, the orientation angle, speech, roll, and yaw will be measured as the body fixed coordinate system is moving uh, in the direction of the of the movement of the vehicle. The mathematical model for inertial positioning can be understood uh, as follows. Uh, from one, uh, we can see that the uh, velocity is a time de derivative of position. Inversely, as given by two, if you want to get position, we have to integrate velocity. So if we want position at a particular epoch t, we're going to have uh, to know the position at epoch t sub zero, and uh, we're going to have to integrate uh, between uh, the velocity between the, this time period. Uh, now, acceleration is the uh, double time derivative of position. Inversely, we can get, uh, we go, if we want to get position from acceleration, we have to double integrate that. So position uh, at the epoch uh, t sub 1 is going to be the initial position plus the velocity that has been uh, applied during this time period plus the double integral of acceleration uh, between the same time period. So that would be already a mathematical model for inertial positioning. But usually, things get simpler because usually uh, the, um, the vehicle starts uh, stationary, therefore the initial velocity equals to zero. So we can then write the, uh, the mathematical model <coughs> in such a way that uh, the position uh, at epoch t sub one is going to be equal to the position the initial position at the epoch t sub zero plus a double integral of acceleration between the time uh, t sub zero and t sub one. One thing that is interesting to realize uh, that uh, integration differentiation they result in different uh, things as far as uh, as uh, noise and is concerned, <coughs> noise and error. So integration uh, when you go from acceleration to position. It is a low pass filter because we're going from a from a, uh, a input that contains uh, lots of high frequencies, and we go to position that uh, is something smooth. Uh, and what we have is basically accumulation of errors with time. This is the case of inertial sensors. Uh, in other uh, sensors like GNSS, uh, when we uh, we can go from a, from position, we know position, and we can. Uh, differentiate to get acceleration. What is happening now is that uh, we are allowing the uh, high frequencies go through, so that's a high pass filter, uh, and therefore becomes sensitive to noise. So uh, it is important, as we're going to see uh, in source of errors, uh, these uh, accumulation of errors with time, uh, which is uh, going to be shown as drifts.